Hello, 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 and welcome to another Wargamer Dragon Cast with me, Rangru. And today we have a 1v1 from one of the Wargame Bootcamp Discord monthly tournaments. And its monthly tournaments theme, or the one from last month, I should really say, is about playing with Category B decks, so I believe 1985. And well, if we look at our two players today, left hand side in the blue, we have Scorpy playing as a Eurocore deck. Category B, and right hand side in red, we have Pro Communist, I'm gonna call him, playing as Eastern Block, and guess what, he is also playing Category B, and we're on Punch Bowl. So, right off the bat, we got some pretty heavy play from both sides into Bravo here. Did he just sell his own guy out of the mortar? Not entirely sure, but anyway, you got T72 here. They are two line for Terry ones, which will definitely outgun him. I believe we do have an ATGM troop coming in, so we're definitely gonna need that to try and keep those Leopards at bay. Is that gonna be a pretty nasty force, especially in this category B fight? Yeah, pretty much one of the heaviest tanks you can really get. But Pro going for a pretty dastardly move up north through some Helicopter play, losing one in the process, but one of the MI-25s and two mi 17 Oh no, only one mi 17s gonna make it. Acro Tower coming in pretty clutch here. It was such a good anti-aircraft piece, thankfully it was introduced in 1980. That's quite a lot of uh, points really thrown down the drain there for pro-communist. I mean, these two helicopters can't really do anything. <laughs> They're going to be chased down by a pirate. One of these is going to try and do some counter pirate action there. But seeing there's two Cassiopes being brought in. Cassiopes, however you say it. I don't think he's going to be able to do all that much. And the Scorpies are doing a fantastic job in Bravo. Pinning down the Special Forces troops, really pro communist only has a good foothold in this southern eastern corner of the sector. It does have the Lekka Pachotas, which is nice, with their long range of cordless rifles, which will definitely help out in the area they're in. Take advantage of that long range. That one concourse almost getting the Crow Tower out, but missing, which is a bit of the same. Definitely could have got some revenge from losing all his helicopters from earlier. But the main thing here is that even though Pro Communist doesn't have great map control, he's got that plus two point advantage as he did pot down a CV into Delta as soon as possible. So Scorpius has run bleeding points in quite a lot of him. It is paying off, of course, because he is getting that map control, but as usual in these 1v1 wargame replays, you really want to think about getting that CV onto the plus two sector as soon as reasonable. I'm not going to say possible, but reasonably possible. It's always a big investment, of course. I think Pro realizes how the center is going to go and that being not well for him. So he's actually deploying some more forces up north here. Just some infantry. And also some infantry down south as well. Get his lacquers to clear through the forest, try to clear up his Marder runs. It's just open ground skirmish over in Bravo. If not much real heavy tank play. I believe Leopard 2 has probably got sniped by the Congols or something because they are no longer with us as we can clearly see. And also probably Lek has helped out. Once again, very good infantry placement from the end. Finally getting that resupply truck. In fact, Congol is a good... I see you're not even going to do a complete rearm as this is just a cheap supply truck. I only have enough room in there to carry two missiles or three missiles. There we go. It man's just take the third one in the uh, passenger seat. What do we have down here? One sneaky OT-64. And pro-communist, pro-playing the Foxtrot, didn't go out well. He killed like a few units, but Scorpy still holds the area. And oh, the Delta CV got sniped. 
I'm really sad I missed you, because that's a pretty damn big kill. I mean, that saves Scorpy from having to buy his own CV for the time being. And the OT is going to go for the, the base run here. Driving on the wrong side of the road, Joe. Oh, I guess depends which country we're in. I believe Southeast Asian countries drive on the right side. Yeah, well, I'm not entirely sure about that. Anyway, it's not going to matter. He's going to run on some AMX 13s and probably die rather quickly. Don't really need reconnaissance optics to see that coming right towards you. What is this Mirage going for? Going for the MI-25. Does get the kill. In and out. Rohi get a ray! It seems so. The MiG-23 not coming in. Or he did come in. He, his missiles is completely missed. When they needed a hit. I think pro communist best plan is really just try to play pretty heavy down south. I mean, Scorpy doesn't have a whole lot here. He's bringing some reinforcements. So, the main thing is he isn't really bringing infantry. Because he really just needs to get control over his village here to secure Foxtrot. And it's the same thing for Echo. But at the same time, pro communist could probably use some infantry to fight over the land. He still holds on to get one sliver of Bravo at least. He was going to be facing a lot of fire. There's not a whole lot left of the infantry here. The Concours are out of ATGMs, so... They're probably going to go down and that's going to give Scorpy the entire point. The Panthers are going to come in to finish them off, and maybe yeah, the supply truck doesn't need to be here anymore. There's not going to be much, yeah, there's not going to be much left to supply, especially when the supply truck goes kaboom. Yeah, this is now not looking very good here for Pro Communist. He's lost the entirety of Bravo. I mean, losing that CV up north, so CV snipe definitely hurt him quite a bit. He's getting a nice easy point advantage, but not anymore. Now Scorpy is starting to edge his way a lot bit out of Bravo here, using that Milan team to try and snipe some anti-aircraft units. And also probably just denying a thing coming up the road, trying to get into Bravo. So Pro, he really needs to try not playing heavy down south, I believe. Try to play his flanks. So you're, you're just not going to get back into Bravo. It's a big open field. There's a lot of angry Europeans in here. Well, I guess he's also a European with his deck. Just on the other side of the Iron Curtain. There we go. The Milan just slowing down reinforcements. If they can hit anything. I mean, it is only a Milan F1. Only has 40% accuracy. It does have super high veterancy. So it should help out quite a bit. Here comes another high-end pro coming. It's really playing pretty heavy in the air here. Scorpy realizes this and going to be resupplying his Crotel because it's probably going to be needed to shoot down these pesky hinds. Do you like what Pro is doing here? He's not moving directly into Foxtrot through the open, he's trying to just go through his forest. And it's actually a pretty damn good approach. As if you manage to get into here at least, I mean you can actually start putting Presser back into Bravo, while also putting Presser down south. He definitely has the cover advantage to get into here. He only has reserve shootings which aren't great, of course, because they are reserve troops. I mean that RPG 2 is pretty pathetic. Don't even believe they can kill an Armada. I 
It's just funny to see people you use had to see reserve troops. Especially in 1v1s, it's just completely unheard of really anymore. Not like an airline battle of the Swedish reserve troops, but they were pretty good. And the bloody machine guns. They were essentially just regular rifle troops, just for the worst training uh, trait. But here we go, Scorpius getting that plus two now because he has the CV under Charlie here, and that's going to force pro communists to get one into Delta, which is definitely going to delay his reinforcements. A little bit of skirmishing on the fox drop, but main thing is Pro still doesn't have any infantry into here. He does have the recon, which is good, and his T-72s can start clearing up house, of course. But when there's peace runs in the air, his T-72s don't stand too much of a chance. So he did barely survive here on a single hit point, so not bad. Could have been much worse. Behind providing pretty good fire support here. I mean, both sides using quite a lot of air power. Just pro communists is preferring the helicopter kind, while Scorpio using much more of the aircraft. There we go, Flank Panzer Capard coming in, stunning up the hind, but the hind is still flying. Oh, with not much ammunition, he probably wants to leave the area. That'd be a good idea. But a Deccan's grouper and just gonna right the deck of the reserve shootings in a close range of the Hichi Carl Gustavs. Yeah, just going to go down. Now Hines really needs to leave the area. I mean, he really should be dead by now. Flag Panzer just needs to breathe in him a little bit and he will die. What a to run. That out of work too. Scorpio is doing a damn good job of keeping up the press. He's going to be getting a CV into Echo. We'll give him a plus one point advantage. We do have these fabs over here which are... I'm wondering if he's going to try and go for CV snipe. It is possible. Oh, it is possible, but yeah, we do have the 57 mils and that close range. They are pretty deadly. Especially against such lightly armed vehicles. Or armoured vehicles. Main thing is pro-communist is really stuck in a rut here in this forest. He's having a very hard time of actually moving out of it. He's mainly just relying on reserve students when really he needs some more proper infantry. I mean, a good cannon fodder, of course, and he does have decent fire support backing him up his time with all the tanks and helicopters. But may maybe it might work. But if that peace rank comes in and snipes a few T-72s, it could really be it. You know, he's bringing in adequate AA and recon as well. Is going to be a slow push, of course. Yeah, the reserve shootings do move slower, I believe, compared to. Yeah, they do move slower compared to other infantry units, of course. They have worse quality boots, most likely. But Prurus is doing this red tide push through the forest here. Just a bunch of cheap APCs and Panzer Jaegers. It's just a lot of stuff which Scorpio will have to deal with. 
It's not really cruelty stuff, of course. He can pretty easily blow these guys up, but there's just so many targets. And there's quite a decent amount of AA here. You've got Strollers up front, the ROM in the back, the potential MiG-23, actually two ROMs. Scorpio doesn't really have a whole lot here. You know, one Panther did some fantastic work, but now he is going to die from the Strella. I've seen a small infantry push here from Scorpy just trying to get his Jeshus and Reemers into the forest. But caught out in the open, they are going to go down. This is, I mean, map control is... I mean, it still is in Scorpy's favor, of course, especially considering he has the plus one, or the plus one down on Echo, and also a potential cap in Bravo. Oh, last two fire in a race could actually do something, or it couldn't really do anything as well. That works. But now I think we're starting to reach the limit of this personal reserve shooting. It's only have that much health supporting him right now. And by themselves, reserve shootings are, well, really bad. <laughs> they can put down some suppressive fire, but that's really about it. And considering between, like, 15 guys, you only have 900 rounds. There isn't a whole lot, really. Yeah, you know, they can't really fight all that long. I mean, that's like... Two, maybe three magazines per person. But Prairie is pretty adamant in trying to push into Foxtrot, but there is this brewing force up here up north. Sessures and Deccan's groupers, as well as some decent APCs to back him up. If he gets a CV snipe, that's going to give him the lovely plus three and uh, pretty much secure the game, really. I mean, Pro is doing a decent job pushing the fog shot, but I, I think the reserve strategy just hasn't really paid off. I mean, you really want mortar shootings. But he doesn't really have any other regular infantry. I mean, he has the Lekka Pachotas in his deck and the Panjiegas, but he has two cards of ATGM troops, which is probably a little bit too much. You really want more regular frontline troops. There we go, CV is being forced to run away. I think the Sasuas are going to intercept. Same with the fabs, they smell blood in the water. There we go, the guys just got stabbed here. And by stabbed, I mean shot out by a 20mm autocannon. There we go, Scorpy's got the plus three. And pro communist push is just not really making all that much headway. I mean, it's getting into Foxtrot at least. But like, there's just enough here from Scorpy to slow him down. I mean, that one flag panther is holding off all these APCs. The APCs can't really do anything until the more heavily armed forces come up to finish the fight.
We just have Yama down here in Foxtrot at least, but not really much else. The reserve troops are slowly lagging behind and it's really not looking good in Delta, but once again he's only really throwing reserve troops up here. We just need some sort of helicopter, light vehicle, anything to just knock out the APCs and, and he can start clearing up Delta. But Scorpio has a plus three, has over half the points of victory, and there's only 17 minutes left in the match. And that is going to be a good game. Scorpy takes a victory air of a pretty standard 1000 disc KD left, of course, and a very interesting match. I, I do like his tournament format a lot. I, I, I think the uh, Wargame Bootcamp Discord like monthly formats can be pretty fun, especially when you're playing less meta decks, especially just playing like 1980s stuff. I'd hope to see a uh, Category C tournament at some point with all the early cold draw stuff as I think that's pretty cool equipment. But anyway, pretty much I feel like what really screwed over pro communists in this match as I kept complaining about was the reserve troops. It just you, you really just need proper frontline infantry such as modest shoot and just regular rifle troops. Because they're yeah, cheap I mean the reserve troops aren't even really that uh, cheap. They're like five points cheaper or ten points cheaper I believe compared to more Chuchin. I, I kind of forgot, to be honest. You don't, you, you lose so much firepower, the the poor veterancy, the terrible RPGs. You really just want good bloody infantry. I mean, he lost Bravo and that definitely sucked early on, but if he made a more concise push down south, he really could have reaccounted for that and then actually put a presser through Bravo just by sneaking in through that forest. But that's really all I have to say about this match. So I'm going to leave it off. Yeah, this has been another Rangaroo cast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as usual, please just take it easy.